And welcome to our another episode of our Boho Frequency with Mark and Juliana. <laughs> it's us. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube right now, uh, this was recorded with our Boho Beautiful official community who is on the chat bar right now you guys. Um, but if you're watching this on YouTube, like I said, you can always join our next live stream uh, through bohobeautiful.tv. So all you have to do is just click the link in the description here and you can check out our Boho Beautiful official app. Um, outside of doing monthly podcasts, which is what we want to aim to do, um, we actually offer tons of exclusive content, full-length yoga videos. We got yoga calendars, workout calendars, yoga asana tutorials, a whole bunch of fun stuff. And you get to participate in awesome stuff like this. Exactly. Yeah. So, which is super cool because it gives us a chance to interact. So, and actually connect with people a little bit more deeper. So, on YouTube, there's no chat bar, but right now, live with all of you wonderful people here, mm -hmm. um, we can go in and out a little bit, which is really cool. Exactly. Um, so, yeah. So, if you're watching this on YouTube, click the link and you can try out our app for seven days for free as well and check it out. The last thing I want to say before all of the fun stuff begins, uh, that this episode today is also sponsored by Sun Warrior. That's me. Whoops. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> so Sun Warrior is actually a, a product we've been using for the last, I say, eight months, I would say. And they're um, supplements, mainly protein powders, collagen powders that we've been putting in our smoothies. And we love it. They're vegan. They're transparent about all their ingredients. They taste amazing. And we were really happy to collaborate with them on this um podcast series that we do here and uh, if you guys want to check out some of some other products we offer 10 percent off with the link in the description here of this video so after it's done feel free to click the link and you can try out some other products with 10 percent off so what is the format of our episode today we're going to do a q a as we mentioned so our boho beautiful official community you guys were amazing and sending us all these wonderful questions so thank you so much and thank you for not just the questions but all the love and all of your feedback it truly it fills us up with mark like we yeah. we spend some time going through the questions and picking the ones we want to answer today because obviously we can't answer everything we're trying to limit our podcast to an hour and we're we gonna we're gonna try and do a few of the questions live here as well so we'll jump back and forth once yeah. we get into the q a mm -hmm. portion of it all yeah but first i think before we jump into the questions we just wanted to quickly talk about something that we sent over in our community newsletter a couple of days ago and that is the old growth trees it is something that has really strike a chord in our hearts. Um, as you guys just asked earlier, yes, we are back in British Columbia in Canada. As you can see with the little studio, we're like, hey, there's, there's that couch that you've seen <laughs> like months ago. We left Costa Rica. We came back to, to visit some family here for a few months. And um, when we got back to the island... It was well, crazy. We were in hotel quarantine. And then we ended up quarantining at home, that whole scenario. But when we got to the hotel quarantine, like the story we were telling in, uh, in the newsletter, mm -hmm. we, um, we were on YouTube um, doing some work and we got served a commercial. And it was actually a commercial for a really um, important cause that, that struck us being back in BC. But yeah. it was basically um, some celebrities and notable indigenous chiefs and members of their community and some Canadian actors and uh, Margaret Atwood and a few people basically pleading for help for the um, to save the old growth trees because yeah. the BC government um, made some promises, got into power, and like many governments all over the world, doesn't fall through with what they promised, and they continue to allow um, industry to con uh, to log the old growth trees. As you're watching this, some of the last old growth trees in rainforests across British Columbia are falling. Some of them are over a thousand years old. Premier Horgan, you promised to protect them. Less than 1% of forests in British Columbia still have big old growth trees. Like we're is. talking trees that are 500,000 like, years old. It is heartbreaking. It, it's truly heartbreaking. And even these these trees are already only 1%. There's only 1% of them left here in BC right now. And they play such an important part in helping us cope with climate change, you know, setting off the carbon emissions. And like, look at the world right now, right? Like, it's sad. Like, there's flooding, there's forest fires, there's so much that's happening with our earth. And 
the last thing we need to do is be cutting down these incredible, powerful trees that help us heal the planet. And so it was really heartbreaking. And so we saw the commercial and we saw you know, this whole um, campaign happening. And that's what we wanted to share with you guys. But also we wanted to let you know, our community members on Boho Beautiful Official, is that together with you guys, we decided to donate um, $2,500 to Stand.Earth, which is the organization that is leading this campaign right now to help fight the insane logging of these incredible trees. And they're, they're organizing and they have a petition. The link mm -hmm. is down um, in the description of this video. They're so close now. Um, and anyone watching this, if you sign it, will get there. Like they'll actually yeah. meet their, um, their goal for the petition, which is really cool. And there's also a donate button. But um, it's really important. And I think it's not just about coping with climate change, but these forests and these trees helped us cope with COVID. Yes. Like they help like, us all cope it's with for like our health, not just the health of our planet, but our health. Yeah. When, like, when the lockdown happened, that's where we went. Yeah. When anytime we ever need it, nature they're is there the for cure. Us. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think, you know, we put the quote in our newsletter. Um, but, you know, when are we going to understand that at the end, after all the fish have been gone. eaten and the trees have been cut down, you can't eat money. Yeah. You can't exist on money. It's not going to cure you. It's not going to heal us. This yeah. industry, there's a better balance to be found. And, and Stand Out Earth is an amazing organization that is worth checking out and check out the link. And honestly, it costs you nothing mm -hmm. to just go and sign the petition. And, and it gives them the power to be more effective. Yeah. It's the littlest thing for us. But also some people in the questions were asking about what they can do. Um, we actually went yesterday two days no, ago two days ago we tried to go to this incredible forest here on vancouver island called avatar grove has anyone ever been to avatar like, forest avatar um, like literally like the movie you know where it's all like crazy remember the trees i don't know if you guys seen the avatar movie so we tried to go there and we actually couldn't because now the rcmp and the logging companies have put these barricades and these gates to stop people from going because a lot of protesters and demonstrators are going and people that are just trying to stand up and if you try this. to if you try to pass it they search you they search you. i don't know what they're looking for yeah. but they like you basically get shaken down if you try to walk it's, the four kilometers up the road to avatar grove yeah um so it was interesting we drove all the way to port renfrew and we found out that a huge portion it's called war in the woods and if you want to help they're always looking for volunteers um, or you can just join the movement or you can just join the like, Facebook groups yeah, or, or whatever. Or just show up. You know, some, a lot of the times they just have camps and they just camp out and you can just show up and kind of show your support and be like, you know, show your support for these people that are putting out their time and energy to help protect these, uh, these trees. So many of you guys are saying signed and donated. Oh, thank you. That's, <laughs> that's amazing. And share. As somebody said signed yeah signed sharing, and i think is just important too petition. because it just shares the message as well mm -hmm. and you know i think that's the, the least we can do is just spread the word we thought this was really cool too because um it's a great opportunity for us to come together as the Boa beautiful official community community mm -hmm. and do something and so we think that like moving forward we're going to look monthly for other organizations like this that we can come together as a team and just donate and and we'll sign do. petitions yeah. or and we'll donate some money and if you guys want to donate money and share in your world too that would be amazing but that way we're actually it's i think I, it helps us feel a little a little less hopeless mm -hmm. because when there's these big massive issues um you know how many people do we associate outside of Bo Beautiful in a day? Like a very small handful. We all have very small circles and social media circles, but like no one that we would call a team or a family. And like to this extent, there's so many of us here. It's and a community. This community, yeah. like we can do something. And by signing and donating and us giving some of the money that comes in from Boho Official, it's a really great way we're coming together and we can choose different organizations each month. So if you guys have um, suggestions as well. Yeah, or maybe you run an organization or you're part of something, um, feel free to share it our way. And that could be for the earth, for the animals, for people, you know, whatever it is, any way that we can just spread the light and, and share more mm -hmm. love and support for people trying to fight for goodness and for the preservation and well-being of yeah. our lives and of other animals and, and the earth. I think the least we can do is support 
share, bring awareness to, donate and, some money. And know? again, like mm-hmm. then we all don't have to feel like, oh, I shared it to Facebook and that's it. Like we all know if we all do it, mm-hmm. each one of us here on this live stream, here on this app, if each of us do one thing together, that's huge. Like that's, it, it means something. Like we can push this petition over the edge. Like mm-hmm. if we all donate a little bit of money, we can give them more funds to to get their voice heard, to get more people to Ottawa to talk about this federally, or get more yeah. people to Vancouver to talk about this, or Victoria to talk about this provincially. Um, and you know, it's it's it's. I guess I'm getting carried away because <laughs> I'm just passionate about. We're very it. passionate about, it, especially coming back. You like, know, like we were. Ugh in beautiful Costa Rica with so much diversity and then we come here which is also another beautiful place like Vancouver Island for anyone that's never been here before a beautiful place to visit especially in the summer oh, like the, summer, the rainforest it's, like it's, it's so beautiful here and so for us to return and to hear that's that's what's happening right now is really heartbreaking so I think we're just passionately wanting yeah. to share <laughs> oh my God. but um, anyways let's get to our q a and let's get to our comments because or questions because you guys were so wonderful to share all of that um so we actually picked a whole bunch and we printed them out so we're gonna pass the little paper back and forth and beautiful. and check and then yeah if you guys have any other comments or questions feel free to use the chat box and mark will check it in check in on it and so awesome to see you guys here and to see you guys sharing and supporting the idea and um and just getting behind this cause it means Mm -hmm. so much to us Mm -hmm. and i mean it means so much to the future the planet these are our trees like yeah it's amazing all right so i'm gonna just pick a question here Hmm. Okay, <laughs> this is a good question. This is the first one. This Who's is it from, from this is from Miranda Del. Okay, I apologize if I screw up people's last We're names. We're terrible with <laughs> names. Miranda Del Plavignano. I probably screwed that up. I'm sorry. It sounds Miranda. like you might have. No, maybe, <laughs> but I did my best. Anyways, hello. It's been about a year and a half now. I have been following your journey. Your videos have completely changed my life. Thank you. I wanted to know, how do you stay so focused on this path when there's so much toxicity in the world and on social media? Oh. So, I mean, that's an amazing, we could talk about that for two hours. I know, we have to like find a way to keep our answers. Keep these as quick and to the point, hey? Oh my goodness. Well, yes, toxicity in the world, social media, I mean. It's everywhere. Yeah, you it is. I mean, it really depends on where you look, right? Because if you want to find it, there are many doorways to find it. Well, not if you want to find it, but where you look is where it just gets thrown at you in yeah. a way, right? So mm-hmm. it's almost like I think we have a very active campaign that's always ongoing, like it, um, which is to control what comes into our mind and our general energy and our experience of day-to-day life. Um, And it's been, it's always evolving, this campaign, but it started years ago when we deleted our personal Facebooks. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it continues to be an active self-awareness of the habits we get into that, that I think that sort of like trigger our emotional frequencies Um, emotional response and emotional responses and then doing our best when we can notice what it is that we've been pulled into whether it's checking the news on our phone or um, talking about covid at dinner you know and all the negative things and all the crazy things or social media in general i think we have to be the guardians of our own minds exactly and i think the guardians of our minds being it means being aware And so that idea of awareness plays a huge part in our everyday experiences. So when you can be fully present and aware that your actions are causing you to welcome and bring in more of that toxicity, whether it is through social media, whether that is through news outlets, that awareness can allow you to put a break, put a pause and change. Whoops, sorry, I'm hitting the mic. (laughs) And change um what you're doing in that moment so if you're swiping left on your phone and getting lost in the news of the media that's pulling you down into this very negative mind state of fear mentality something that we've very much noticed being back in canada that there's a lot of fear being pushed on you again and i think 
we kind of eliminated ourselves from that being in a different country in Costa Rica. That was the ultimate guardian of our mind. Yeah. We actually left. So the- now coming back, yeah. right? It's it's hard. And again, that awareness comes into play. And same thing with social media, right? Like choosing what you follow, let's say on Instagram. If there's an account that is not allowing you to feel uplifted, um, bringing good positive energy into your life, why are you following it? Like, why are you giving into the gossip or to other people's lives that doesn't lift you up or bring value to you in one way or another? But in some sense of the word, I think, not the sense of the word, but in some sense, I think also just monitoring social media as a whole. I think if we all saw the social dilemma, if you haven't, it's a really great documentary, but it's something that I think um, limiting or eliminating social media as a Mm -hmm. whole like it's not just about following positive things because they've built it in a way so that even if you're following positive things they'll insert things in it and everything we look at acts as a mirror of course but you can't fully eliminate social media because people use it to stay in touch with their friends and family lots of people do though no i know but i'm just saying not everyone is ready for that kind of commitment no of course but i'm just saying like if you want the ultimate protection Uh it's get rid like you know, if you're a smoker, don't keep cigarettes in the house. Of course. So if if you find that social media, that there's toxicity in it, that you, it, you find it hard not to get hooked to. I mean, I still, if I let myself put an app on the phone, honest to God, mm-hmm. if it's just like, if I just put the YouTube app, I find my dead minutes rather than engaging with you or sitting with an Xavian or talking to the person next to me, I find that I get sucked into something and then whatever it is I get sucked into, it's usually something that they're using to emotionally manipulate me. So some kind of drama or some kind of drastic headline or some kind of video that everyone's watching because no one can help clicking Mm -hmm. on it. It's really crazy. So I think in this day and age, it's just like... So how do we stay focused? That was the question. For us, A deep morning spiritual practice? And we also eliminate and we eliminate the outlets that would suck us in so we don't have the function on our phones to swipe to read the news we just took it off completely never read the news that was anymore. one of the hardest addictions to get yeah. over then um instagram is very limited to just checking you know what we need or for our community posting whenever we need to and then closing it off i even like took instagram off of you know when you swipe and we have an iphone right I took it off like the main pages. I have it in a way where it really takes me like five or six times to swipe and to find it. And that way it allows me to control that point of aimlessly swiping, clicking and scrolling. Yeah, if you have more steps to get to something. Yeah, it forces you to be like, wait, what am I doing? Yeah, You know, so just making it harder for yourself to engage and using it in a positive way. So if you do need to use social media, which a lot of people do need to use it for business, for family, for friends, just being aware and mindful. Well, we have an extra phone for social media. That's something that we did. (laughs) Because I didn't want any of my, on my phone, we got a second phone for our business so that when we need to use social media, we have to go find that phone we have to go turn like it's, it becomes a process that allows self-awareness to enter the, yeah. the the behavior loop so that's kind of our tricks of keeping ourselves focused on i know there's many people that this do is, different things this but. is cool magical home says i use my personal facebook to spread positivity then on my blog facebook page i share affirmations meditations and spells to spread positivity that's beautiful like that's a uh, that's a really cool way to think about something that's you know, for the majority of people really toxic and then sort of swimming upstream You're against using it, it in a to use it for good. Way. Yeah, exactly. The internet can be a beautiful tool. Oh my God, look, we are using the internet right now, right? We to are. connect. So yeah, so finding a, a positive way to use these outlets and eliminating yourself from the negative ones. K- um, Kira's d- uh, diary says, just unfollowed most people an hour ago to clean up my space. So clean <laughs> up your space is really good. Um, Lindsay goes, I curate my social media to follow what is meaningful and resonates with my values. These are all really great ways to do it. Yeah. Um, Marishka Ruff, your time, attention, and feeling are precious, so direct them wisely. That's beautiful. That's, that's so perfect, yeah, right? Exactly. That's yeah. really, really cool. Um, and just, yeah, I think it's cool if we just interact a little bit like this. Mm-hmm. Um, sh- I, yeah, I only use... Uh, dietitian angelis 
Angela says she only uses her social media for business and uses YouTube for learning and education. And that's something why I end up getting on YouTube a lot is because I use it for learning mm -hmm. and education. Yeah. But they still know every now and then they can drop something in there on me. And all of a sudden I'm reading the latest headline about this. Or it's I've been using YouTube to play lullabies for Xavier. Oh, <laughs> Whenever yeah. I try to put him to sleep, there's like these Russian lullabies that I find and he loves it and he just falls asleep. So I use YouTube for that outside of obviously our business and what we do. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Okay. Okay. Let me Next go. question. All right. Um, which one did you do? Miranda? Mm -hmm. Right at the top, eh? This is a good one because someone was just asking. We were just talking about um, causes. So Valentina Vanini says, thank you for your wonderful work that changes lives. I wanted to ask you about the progress of the construction of the hospital for the dogs of Territorio de Zaguates. Uh, it would be great if you could shoot a video once the work is finished to show us the hospital and the sign with all, all the names of all of our pets. Yes. And that's a very timely and good because we actually put that in our newsletter as well. Mm -hmm. um, so backstory, right? The two days before Juliana went into labor, <laughs> we launched a campaign. Um, uh, in honor of our dog that we lost, Prince. And it was to help this incredible shelter in Costa Rica that has 2,000 dogs right now off leash. It's called Territorio de Zaguates. It's a no kill mm -hmm. um, off lease, off okay. lease shelter for any dog in Costa Rica that needs yeah. help. They don't turn anyone away. It's unbelievable. And they were in dire need of a medical clinic because they had to constantly move their dogs to a vet nearby. And it was a nightmare dealing with 2,000 dogs. And so they were trying to raise money, but they were having difficulties. And so we wanted to step in and help with our community and raise the money, which we did, which was amazing. Um, and what we wanted to add was that everybody were able to donate in honor of their lost pet and let us know what who they're donating in honor of. And so once the medical clinic is built, there's going to be a very giant plaque built and placed on the ground of the clinic with all our names all our, our animals is names it's so beautiful so it's yeah. just, you're donating in honor of and allowing that that being that creature or that person some people donated for people yeah um to be the reason that you this clinic was being built for to help and continue through time um and we raised sixty thousand dollars yeah it was amazing it was unbelievable and, and leah who's the owner of it was incredibly grateful and we've been in contact with her almost every couple of weeks just trying to get updates on how everything is moving along and construction starts very soon and it's not going to yeah. take too long to go and we finished the organizing all the names for the plaque yes there's, there's like, like a like, thousand no it was like 1500 oh or my something. goodness there's a lot of names we guys. thought it would be a plaque and now it's just going to be like a monument <laughs> yeah it's going to be like a flat and so leah actually found um someone that in san jose this is kind of in costa rica where they're based that um can hopefully do a good job in putting them in stone. And so that's being currently framed and designed. And it's going to be cool too, because it's mm -hmm. like the name of who it's in honor of, who it came from and the, country. and the country. So there's like these kind of the way we started putting it together is in these columns of different countries mm -hmm. and sections. So it really shows that from all over the world, it's coming from everywhere. Yeah, it really, it really is special. So um, we're definitely, you know, we're keeping keeping it checking in on her to make sure the movement is happening and, at a good and, pace. And when it's done, we're definitely going to go and shoot and do a live stream and take lots of photos yeah. and bring it all to light again yeah. because so, it's so beautiful. So I don't know how long construction will take. I mean, it'll take a little bit, right? Especially right now, Costa Rica is going into rainy season, so it slows yeah, everything down mm -hmm. in regards to construction because it's like monsoon season. But hopefully my fingers are crossed for possibly end of the year they should have it completed and it, we'll be in costa rica at that time so it's gonna be beautiful yeah i can't okay. wait mm -hmm. do you want to do one sure okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so right. that's uh the territory de Zaguatas. and if you want and if you sort of missed the boat on all this because it was so long ago and you want to go check it out i think it's at territory de Zaguatas, uh, dot com maybe but just google it um land of the strays is the translation we'll add a link too yeah we'll put a link mm -hmm. into the into the video yeah. for sure Okay, so this is a really interesting, powerful question that uh, I'd like to read. All right, it's from William Greenberg. As part of a community that shuns materialism, capitalism, and the selling of our souls to the mainstream industrial complex, I find it fascinating how you found the balance between them. 
how you hmm. created that connection without selling out. At some point, I'd love to hear more about the business side. Did you develop and implement a long-term strategic plan? Did you build slowly just with sweat equity or did you risk capital in order to achieve the greater goal of enriching people's lives as you have mine? Thank you for who you are and what you bring to this world. It is truly remarkable. Thank a, you, William. That's what a so beautiful, sweet. What a beautiful question. Yeah, thank you. Well, that's... It's powerful. I think that's really interesting because we've found with Boho Beautiful that it is such a force in our life um, that sometimes, well, we just always have to be really mindful of the balance of intention versus like the business. Yeah, and, and that's, that's it's hard. It's really hard. Yeah. It's like, it's kind of like, because there's meters of business and saying, like of judging a business and what its success is. And it's so easy to get pulled into like tracking numbers and analytics and and things that don't really matter or weren't even the intention of why we began, but thinking that that is the meter of success. And it's almost that the ego we've noticed is what drives us to looking at the business that way. Um, and it pulls you like it's like the dark force, like and you just feel yourself getting sucked in. And if you're not mindful of it, you can go down that route. And, and at times we've been like, dark. what are we doing? Like, what yeah. are we like this we isn't, have to pull ourselves away yeah, constantly yeah. it's like an ebb and flow a constant yeah. ebb and flow of like it's a mindful and and really delicate thing for us because it never feels right when we're like worried about a youtube algorithm that's not why we started and i think that's you know part of the question when willie was asking you know how did, did we start this with you know the equity of you know what I mean? Like, where did we start from? What was the intention? And to us, when we began creating our first video, it never wasn't, it was never about creating a business. And obviously in the back of your mind, like, hey, if this works, this would be cool if we could do this full time and make a living off of it. But it wasn't the main intention behind it. I think we've, you know, being a yoga teacher at that time, I always wanted to like, I'd love to be able to share this with more people than just the people that come to my class. And, you know, with Mark and where we were in our life, we knew that there was something we needed to change and we wanted to create something that could give more to the world. Well, I think mm -hmm. we felt like our life needed to contribute. And so that's kind of where it started for us in the beginning. It was just to create and to contribute and to share. And it was mindfully so because everything else we'd ever done in life was always with an expectation or a hope of the the destination. Yeah. You know, like when you're younger and you start a band, you're like, I want my band to be famous. And that becomes your intention and your motive. Or I want to have a million dollar business and have this and this and this. And, and that this. becomes yeah. your driving why. Mm -hmm. And and our why, we were very conscious, was that it had to stay pure. Yeah, It had to just be because we need to know that our energy is doing something more than the, it was doing at that moment, and exactly. which was very little. Um, and as long as we manage that, and we said, if we, like, I remember the first video I ever posted, we've told this story before, mm -hmm. but going to bed that night and like, it was terrifying and you're putting yourself out in the world and mm -hmm. you know, you, you know, everyone, cause you're putting it on your social media channel. So, like, you know, yeah, all your friends I'll are judging, judging you <laughs> and all the stuff and like everyone, yeah. you know, and every, and we, I remember that night being such a mess and we lied in bed and we were just like, no matter what happens, no matter what mm -hmm. we have to stay where we are in this moment and that moment was to do good things for the reason of being good exactly and then of course you know as things started to catch on and everything in our community started to grow and obviously the business started to grow and we're very blessed that we can do this full time and, and make a living off of what we do um we constantly have to find that balance and bring ourselves back to that first intention because that's what makes everything feel like there's a greater purpose. If you're just focusing on the business side and everything turns to be about profit and money and this, then you might as well be running a watch company. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, That's a good point. Like it's, you lose that touch with that deeper intention and that deeper service that um, fulfills your soul more than just fulfilling your life and allowing you to have a comfortable life. And, um, 
And we went all in. That's the sweat equity part yes. of it. Yes. We literally, we were just like, as soon as somebody watched our first video, we're like, there's people out there. Yeah. Let's go. And uh, so it was, you know, we basically took the end of our money to buy the gear we had. And we had then, very little at that time. And we used a lot <laughs> of our savings money to just put it out there. And we went yeah. all in and we yeah. changed our life. We yeah. changed our habits. We changed our weekends and our nights and what we did with our spare time. Yeah. And um, while we worked our jobs, we used the sweat equity of every other minute. To so, work on this. And I, yeah. I, and I really do, I do believe that time, putting time into a project is more of an investment almost than money. And it's more important. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's almost like there's a bank for a project. And the more time you can invest in that project that you can put like fully focused in your flow state into something, the more that that investment grows and grows and grows and eventually gives back. And, you know, and it's not like, oh, I worked on this for a month. It's like, no, no, you got to work on this for years. three years. years. Yeah. You have to work on this for like as, every and you minute you have. And you never stop working. And you can never <laughs> stop investing. It only continues to, to move forward. And that's the real sweat equity of yeah. it. It's just surrendering to the idea that if this is something you love, what, what better thing is there to do? Like watch Netflix? Yeah. Like what better thing is there to do? Like go on Facebook and scroll through the stream? Like, yeah, you find something that fulfills your soul and fulfills your purpose. And I think that is something that all of us are searching for in this life is everyone's searching for a way to serve or to find a purpose in this life, whether that is through your job, whether that is through your hobbies or your relationships, whatever it is, is we're all seeking to feel purposeful. Mm -hmm. And for us, this fulfilled that feeling like, oh, we're being, being able to serve and to help. And that is our purpose on this earth is to share, yeah. to give as much as we can and to be of service as much as we can. And, in, and that was the thing about that night in bed. We were like, yeah. it doesn't matter if 10 people watch it or 10 million. Yeah. Like it, we it cannot change the why because it's just as valuable. The one person who watches something that you create it might have a bigger impact than the 10,000 that yeah. might see something else and collectively the impact that that is. And I think that's the big problem right now in the world that we live in with social media and everything is just 10 times the speed of, you know what I mean? Everything mm -hmm. is TikToks and this and this and this is that a lot of people get really um, demotivated when they create something and it doesn't, you know, get the expectation that they wanted. So it doesn't get the millions of views or the likes and, and they get discouraged and then they quit. Well, and then they forget the reason why they did that in the first place is to share yeah. something. And then that's why a lot of people start stop because they just expect that it's going to give them this gratification and this response. And I think that is a big problem. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. it's a culture that it mm -hmm. seeks validation through like, through statistical data, yeah, um, not validation through the process of creation or through the the engagement of maybe the one person it matters most to. Yeah, and I think if people focused out not on the numbers and the response, but, but on what they're able to share with the world and sharing, just and sharing and the process exactly. of putting that together, yeah. I think it would actually give them the the feedback and the response that they want eventually right it's not giving up and it's it's where your intention lies if your intention lies in the actual service that you want to share it's like the universe responds back in the ways in gratifying you and what you need but if your intention is set on just the monetary success or the numbers or the likes or the responses mm -hmm. then your focus is in the wrong place and you're going to be very limited you're, it's very shallow Mm. you know and so i think um that's something we try to always remind ourselves because well, we, we get lost in it too we're like oh man we posted we worked for 20 hours for 40 hours on this video and only get x amount of views and you have to be like whoa like what like yeah, really yeah. was you this lose, the reason why we did this you lose your sort of i don't know your groundedness in yeah in just like a real reality uh -huh. like you lose like you can lose yourself you're like what like a hundred thousand people no, wasn't I, enough. <laughs> I used to see it in the music business all the time. Like yeah. artists that went from like selling lots of tickets to only selling a thousand and they'd be so upset and you'd be like, 
there's a thousand people that you can perform for live like and and you know like but it was never it can it can so quickly become never enough when it's driven by yeah, ego because exactly. it's insatiable because the ego will never be satisfied never so. never never so we struggle with it for sure mm -hmm. and like anybody else and we just for us we constantly have to remind ourselves of that day the very first video we ever posted and constantly bring ourselves back to the why we started this in the first place because mm -hmm. obviously the ego will get in the way and you will be pulled in many directions and your focus will be pulled towards the business and the money and this and mm -hmm. this and this and it's all important don't get me wrong but it's not the most important thing and we have to constantly remind ourselves of that and, and help each other with it as well constantly so, yeah. because yeah the ego never rests it doesn't never. it doesn't sleep <laughs> um so uh i don't know how to pronounce hele uh windelov lynn oh my god i, I need glasses lids willius um asked i'm so sorry i butchered your name um, <laughs> i think people forgive you for and that. i know i know this person because they're always engaging with us there every time and we appreciate it so much um, how do you manage to balance your energy and heart in focus between Xavian time and boho time? P.S. Mm. I'm so fond of you. Love from Denmark. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> That's been a, a new challenge for us. Obviously, we're new parents. We had our baby in January, January 13th. Um, and it's definitely brought a new sense of priorities, obviously. Um, but also a shift in how we work. I mean, for me, um, Mark's really definitely, you've taken a lot more on your plate now because. You've he, taken a lot more on your plate. Yeah. I mean, now my priorities lie in this little human being that I have to raise, that we have to raise, but you know, that depends on me so much too, as a new mom. And I'm so grateful that I do have help. Like my mom's here helping and we've had, um, some nanny help when we were shooting the last few months with some wonderful people. And then um, on this end, I'm so grateful that we have helped because we've been expanding our team. Yes. On the boho side. So it's been support. I think the answer Su is support, support on both sides. Support is key because I even said to Mark, I'm like, honestly, if I didn't have a support, whether it's from my mom or from the nanny that we hire, I don't like, I wouldn't be able to offer anything here because mm -hmm. you know he sleeps very little and he has these little micro naps throughout the day throughout he the, sleeps great at night at night he sleeps amazingly at night but in the day like you only have x amount of time yeah, and so i wouldn't be able to give my energy to anything like videos or even creating classes um, mm -hmm. if i didn't have the help so the help has definitely been um a huge key in everything that we do but also i think again that um, acceptance and gratitude and appreciation for the fact that life changes and our priorities shift and we had to shift the way we yeah. work and the way we live our life and slightly we just, differently. We just mm -hmm. try to be self-aware with the commitments we make mm -hmm. um, and knowing there's a greater commitment always now. And yeah. that's making time and making sure we protect the time for Xavier. Yeah. Um, well, at the same time, doing right by um, the business we've created because that's also in a way um, a it, child of ours i guess <laughs> that's it. well no it's also his future and his future and yeah. our like it's yeah. and and it's you know and it's the purpose for all of this it's, yeah um so it's just about being all of our answers seem to be like we try to be very mindful <laughs> well mindful and <laughs> well i mean all of and, our answers to all the questions yeah like and everything using that, tools like help to help you find that balance. No, know? but I'm, mm -hmm. never mind. I was trying to say that every time someone asks us a question, <laughs> or like, like awareness, mindfulness. Be mindful, yeah. be self-aware. But it's true, you know, otherwise if you don't have that self-awareness, you can get carried away on one end mm -hmm. and be overwhelmed. So, yeah. Okay, mm. so Yoga B, I left a gift with bracelets at Love Burger a few weeks ago. Did you guys get it? I was at Nexus. Um, also met Fabrizio and the Love Burger team. Also got a tattoo in Nasara, LOL. <laughs> I like how I read the end lines. They're always like a little tag on things. Yes. Yes, we did. I think, did we? Yes, we did get them. What are you talking no, about? No, I'm talking about, did we send our little letter? No, no. no. Oh, okay. Wait, have we been to the post? Op We've been in no, quarantine for two true. weeks. We okay. were going to send a letter. Yes, we did get them. And thank you. Thank you so much. They're beautiful. Oh, that was so sweet. They're so sweet and fab did tell us he's like oh there's someone that came by mm -hmm. and, sent, and dropped off a little gift so thank you so much yeah, that, that was, is 
super, super sweet of you. I'm sorry we couldn't meet you in person. I think during that time that you were there, our life was a little nuts. We oh just got God. back from uh, shooting for like two months, and I know we were kind of moving places, and it was yeah. We moved and we shot, and we were coming back to Canada. And there was like eight million things for us to take care of at the same time, so we were a little, our life was insane. A little bit of a turmoil, but thank you, really, really appreciate it. And I hope your training was amazing at Nexus. Nexus is a cool um, yoga institute in Osara that does teacher trainings. We shot our uh, prenatal program there. Yeah, but it was honestly yeah. like, it was just so sweet of you. It was unasked for. Yeah. Somehow you tracked us down to Love Burger. <laughs> and it was just, and the letter that you wrote, and it was just, Thank honestly, you. it really, yeah. I think we needed something like that at that time because we were in the middle of like, um, madness. Lot. Yeah. So it would like pull us back, like, whoa, this is so sweet. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> oh <my laughs> Thank goodness. you so much. Okay, let's go back to Our like questions? a question. Yeah, okay. why not? Oh, I, I picked the last one, so you, you have to did? do it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a good one. Okay. So from Sonia Tremblay. Hello. I would really like for you guys to explain how morphology can make it impossible for some of us to perform some asanas, back flexibility, shoulders, hips, at 100%. In many cases, yoga is not our full-time job, and even a regular practice, we do not reach every posture. Is it the way our bones are placed? Is it something else? If you know... Sometimes it's a bit discouraging. Thank you. Yes, it can definitely. I mean, there's a there's a few. Let, there's a physiological discussion, and then there's also just like a yoga and yeah. why we do yoga. I guess discussion. let's talk phys physiological discussion first. So there's these two things that we like to talk about. There, two words: tension and compression. So tension is a sensation that you feel when you get into a yoga pose and you're reaching for, and it feels kind of tight. You're feeling resistance in your muscles, but then you kind of feel a release. And with time, that flexibility comes to you. Well, it's, it's meeting your, um, it's meeting, meeting the end of what you can do, mm -hmm. but it's a feeling of like a stretching. A sensation. A sensation of stretching. Yeah. And that you've met it rather than compression which is literally if you can think about like bone on bone or like yeah. tissue against tissue. tissue 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 against tissue and what that is is that yes like all of our bodies the way we've grown and been created and developed I, and how she said it's different morphology i don't know if that's a word morphology but the way our bones morph yeah because, oh totally because yeah. as you grow your bones and you incur what you do and how you behave encourages yeah, exactly. everyone's bones in, are encouraged to grow in a different way yeah so anatomically some people are just unable to do certain poses because just the way their bones are placed or the way their bones hit one another their joints connect or hit one another when they're doing a certain posture it's like you cannot force it and, like and you're going to cause injury and you'll never ever mm -hmm. be like and it's not even some people it's most people there are things that their bodies can't do yeah and that's because of compression and it's literally just because that's the way human bodies are built every built body is different yeah and so i think it's important to really again come to that awareness to find that awareness <laughs> in your practice to realize the difference between the two different types of pains and sensations that you feel so anytime like if i were to explain like how does compression feel like anything that feel like you literally feel like my bones are going against each other or like anything electric or super sharp pains, like all of it's those pains. It's not even pains. electric. It's like you can tell when you're just not able to go mm -hmm. further because yeah. you're some people's wrists. Like there was actually a beautiful example. I remember we talked about this in India when we were there, and the teacher was talking about this. I was doing a training, and they made us all go into shavasana, and they say just go into shavasana and relax your body, right? And notice how some people's feet naturally turn out where their toes point outward and some people's toes just kind of point up or forward and it literally is it's just the way our femur bones the way our bones have structured and and developed is that some people naturally have a natural turnout and some people don't and that's a great example of just like every body is different and so we have to really be mindful of that and think about that. And, and I know it's hard, especially in the way, again, the social media and you watch a video and you say, oh, well, that person so flexible and they does do a pose and I can't do half of that. And you feel discouraged and bad about yourself as if you're bad in yoga. There's no such thing 
as being bad in yoga. That's what I was saying. There's mm-hmm. two discussions, and I think this discussion, um, there's a sickness in yoga, in the culture of yoga, and in, w- I think, what social media has exacerbated in a lot of ways, and that's that um, yoga is um, the perfect pose, and yoga is advancing your practice to levels of like you know being like rubber man or woman and like being a pretzel (laughs) being a pretzel or or like or just like having this ultimate level of grace like a ballerina or like a um like a, a gymnast or you know like it's not about how it looks and i can't say that enough it's about how it feels and what you experience internally that's yoga like that's you know, at the beginning i mean and it should be yoga is literally just to loosen your body to prepare for deep meditation but the practice is practice of asanas and we say this a lot is exactly where you are is exactly where you're supposed to be because that's where you are yeah. and it, it 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 breaks my heart because i go through it but i know that a lot of people leave yoga because they feel their body can't do a certain thing or I'll never be able to do that. or and it, and it turns into like almost an abusive relationship with your body when it should be the exact opposite because um, to find peace with your body is the process of yoga. and Self-love. And self-love. It's finding that self-love. And compassion. And, yeah, and being like, it's okay. You know, you can't touch your toes. That's fine because you know what matters is you actually trying to touch your toes because that's where the magic happens you are building flexibility you're bringing the benefits of that asana to your body by doing the movement well, not by executing the movement perfectly and understanding mm-hmm. how far you can go yeah. and being and then finding compassion for that like that's mm-hmm. the, that's what yoga is and not, patience and patience yeah. and and <laughs> and the stillness in there so It's the ego and the mind and the the reflective mirror of social media looking at all these things. And we're guilty of it to some degree too and contributing to it because maybe we don't talk about this enough. And that, well, on the other hand, we post pictures of you with your leg above your head. Mm -hmm. Like in a thing that I could never in my life ever do because my hips will never, they'll always compress and they'll never let me do that. And... And maybe I'm more compassionate or more passionate about it than um, I used to be because I have to practice yoga every day next to you, um, mm-hmm. which I've had to learn like patience and understanding and that, you know, I'm not just a hockey player. Like, oh, I'm just, I don't, and that was a thing like, and mm-hmm. oh, I'm a man, I shouldn't be able to, it's like, no, no, I'm exactly where I need to be. Like, it's not just about, oh, well, some people do this and some people do that. It's like yoga is for everybody. It, it is, literally is yeah. for everybody. It's not for men. It's not for women. It's not for just people who are flexible. It's for anyone in the state that they're in at that exact moment. And I think um, if you do feel that's, you know, that feeling of disappointment. Which we all feel. Which we do, especially when you're doing a practice and you're like, well, this is impossible for me. I think finding that patience for yourself, acceptance, and maybe just skipping the pose even. You know what I mean? Like there's nothing wrong with not pushing yourself to a point where, you know, you're going to injure your body or this is just completely out of your realm because again, everyone's practice is different. Everybody's body is different. Everybody's experience is different. And you have to, every time you get on the mat, that is your time to do the practice for you. So if that means modifying postures, maybe skipping postures, pausing the video and holding a posture like for a doubled amount of time, that's your practice. You know, the teacher that's on the screen, whether it's me or Mark or another teacher that you do yoga with, they're just your guide. They're not you. And they're just giving you the guidance and helping you find that experience for yourself. And the teacher shouldn't be setting the standard that you feel you have to meet. Not at They're all. They're just guiding you to do, to attempt exactly where yeah, you are. Yeah, because the teacher's journey is different from yours, and their experience is different, and maybe their time on the mat is a lot longer. You know, everyone's experience is different. Everyone's journey is different, and so mm-hmm. remembering that when you get on the mat and stopping this comparison, and and I've seen it so much, especially you know when you do classes in a real yoga studio like no matter what you say you still see people looking around and comparing themselves to the person next to them and it's just i it's a natural thing to do human trait you can't 
you can't feel bad about it, but I think you have to find awareness in it. And, but, and I think mm-hmm. that's why I like doing yoga at home. Because yeah. I don't have to worry about myself falling into that. Yeah, or some people have even got comments where they're like, well, you know, I don't feel confident to step into a yoga classroom, but I feel okay to just do it by myself in my living room. And that's fine too. You know, whatever makes you feel good. And maybe doing it by yourself is serving you greater than getting into that mm-hmm. room with other people where you feel... You have to do it in a space that you're most yeah, comfortable. Yeah, exactly. To be yourself and to mm-hmm. find peace with yourself. Totally. Okay, so um, Michelle Cowbro Klost, I'm a veteran of the Canadian Forces with a service related lower back injury. Thank you for the videos that you focus on back pain. Oh, yeah. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> I, I have not a veteran, but I used to play a lot of hockey and rock out in bands, and I've had my share of back injuries. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I just did my first back class. I recorded the audio for it yesterday. Yeah, so that'll be out. In the next week couple or two. Of weeks. Yeah. But um, we have already a couple of different back videos mm-hmm. that hopefully, yeah, you're finding uh, value out of. So. Which is a good segue because there was a lot of questions about recovery. recovery. Mm-hmm. Let me find one on here. How about that? That's a good thing to go next, isn't it? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, here it is. Astrid uh, Bagnell. Thank you both for your work. It's changed my life in so many ways. I'm a former marathon runner with bad knees. What style of yoga do you consider best for recovery and staying in shape? Love from Buenos Aires, Argentina. This is my first live stream. Um, awesome, welcome. That's <laughs> not necess- that's recovery, a bad knee question, but there was a lot of questions about injuries and or surgery and, and yeah, like things like yeah. that. Um, and it's something we've been thinking about a lot lately. So when we read all those questions, we thought that was really cool. Yeah, we're really starting to think about uh, creating new programs for you guys, and recovery program has been something on our mind. And we just we thought we talked about it this morning. We're like, maybe we should run like a poll <laughs> and ask mm-hmm. everyone to be like, what what would you really love to see, like a recovery program or something else? And we have a couple of ideas in our minds. But going back to recovery. Um, it's very important, I think, for everyone because at some one point or another in our lives, we're all going to be recovering from something, right? It, it Whether, might be an injury. It might be a surgery. It, it might, might be just heartbreak, be like, a heartbreak or yeah. from falling like uh, out of your practice and out of shape, yeah. like recovering from just a bad period in life for whatever reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and yoga, I mean, you're... Um, Astrid was asking what kind of yoga is good for recovery. Like physical recovery, let's say, you know, with knees, anything gentle is definitely the way to go because you need to be very mindful of your movement, especially if you have an injury to be aware of. So um, Hatha yoga, yin yoga is amazing uh, for releasing connective tissues, myofascial release. Um, That brings a lot of benefit and healing to your body so that would be definitely a practice to go towards on the app we have a whole section called sore muscle that's like a filter you can choose and that's a wonderful thing you can do as well because it's a little bit more slower paced it's less fiery less power yoga and it focuses on giving your muscles and your joints that release that you need so that's a wonderful style to include as a recovery Uh, but anything that's a little bit more slower paced and well, um, the key, I mm-hmm. think, the thing about recovery is that starting from zero is a terrible experience. Yeah. Um, and we all have to start from zero at some point. And when you start from zero, it really is about listening to the, um, to the feedback your body gives you mm-hmm. and starting slow and working up well, being mindful of those signals and then adjusting as you go. So... You know, yin yoga might be great for some people recovering from something, but then for others, it may not serve a certain injury they have. Mm-hmm. Um, or re- some restorative might go into some poses or some asanas that don't, you know, that, that don't feed what they're trying to um, get get through. Um, so it really is like yoga, I think, is one of the, I mean, I'm such an advocate for yoga, but it's the most effective tool, I think, for physiotherapy and mm-hmm. for recovery and for coming back from zero because it allows you to actually get in touch and let your body guide you rather than a physiotherapist say, these are the exercises you have to do. Mm-hmm. And then like, maybe those aren't all, like, I'm not saying don't go to physiotherapist. No. I think those exercises are great, but I think there's more 
to recovery than just like lift your leg 10 times. Well, and also thinking of that, I remember when Mark, you know, you were recovering from your herniation, your disc herniations in your back. A beautiful thing that you can do as well is if you have, you know, sets of exercises that your doctor or your physiotherapist has prescribed for you to do to help heal that specific injury, why don't you implement that with a yoga practice? So you're not just getting on your on the floor and doing 10 minutes of leg lifts like you said, mm-hmm. but do a practice, do a whole mind body practice and then include whatever recovery exercises into that practice as well so you're kind of getting best of both and then you're really dedicating you know maybe a full hour to your recovery and that will help with whatever injury as well because the mind plays such an important part with your body the mind and body connection is huge like and i remember even i remember we saw this incredible physiotherapist with mark and you know, Mark was in terrible shape. Like his herniations were so severe that he was living on the floor. Like he couldn't even move. And I remember one of the things that the physiotherapist gave him outside of different exercises was visualization. And he said, lie down, close your eyes and visualize yourself moving the way you want to move or playing hockey or doing yoga. And even just from that idea of visualization, would help your recovery. And so we have to remember how powerful the mind is. And with that, um, including yoga, meditation, visualization, relaxation, and your exercises can be like a well-rounded recovery routine. Mm. I think that's great. Visualization is key. I really find that um, that was, I I saw so many different specialists when, when I had that, like we, I went to two pain specialists. Mm-hmm. I went to the like multiple different physiotherapists. But the one, that one pain specialist, I forget his name, Greg Lehman. I don't know, maybe that's somebody else in my life. Um, he was amazing because he taught me what pain was, and he taught how powerful the brain can mm-hmm. be if you visualize yourself doing things with a healthy body. Yeah, and that becomes like I, that was such a such a key thing to like spend 10 minutes a day just convincing your reality which is what you think about Mm -hmm. that you're healthy and that your back doesn't hurt or that your leg is 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 back to normal or Mm -hmm. whatever it might be and it encourages it encourages the healing and i think that can go for emotional too spending time imagining the emotional healing being done and what how would you live your life and what would you've done differently today and what are you going to do tomorrow if your healing is complete Um, there's so much stuff for it psychologically yeah so meditation would also be a wonderful tool for you to use to help you cope with a physical or a mental emotional spiritual injury that you're dealing with Mm. okay i mean that's interesting joan lingo's recovery would help me get my husband on the mat or hubby on the mat he has three knee and two shoulders shoulder surgeries and and miss mrs weight training he says, he'll join me on the mat and something gentle as a program would be awesome. Yeah, yeah that's a good idea. Because we thought of mm. like, you know, putting one out. We have the prenatal one coming. Yeah, so we've already been thinking about one where, you know, I mean, I've been going through my recovery and giving birth, right? So creating a program that guides not just women that have given birth, but also other people that have had to recover in different ways. Um, so that's definitely on our minds and definitely something that we want to do um we just weren't sure like how how much people would want it so i think think, that's where we were like should we do a poll but by the sounds of it it sounds like everyone could use it one way or another but if we're going to shoot one program yeah well for january Mm -hmm. right yeah i like the idea of another retreat i think that's really cool just to be like retreat two but we'll come up with a better name (laughs) retreat two (laughs) maybe it's because that one was such like um a special program for us to to design and to put together and to shoot yeah. and i think a lot of people have found really really deep spiritual benefit from it and i think that's to me that's really i mean maybe that serves more people where recovery serves people in individual situations and what's to say one's more valuable than the other how do you know, what, how do you decide what do you guys think <laughs> let us know yeah. let us know what uh your your thoughts are on all this because we're trying to wrap our minds about it because it's kind of at a point where we have to start making those decisions because you know usually we produce things months ahead 
we usually try to shoot a program for January around September, October time because we need plenty of time to edit it and get it ready. Even though every year somehow we end up working like New Year's Eve or like one of the last final touches. Like no matter how much time we give ourselves, somehow every New Year's Eve we're in front of our computers. It's ins- it's you know, a- it was so funny this New Year's Eve actually. Uh, we met uh, our two friends, um, Breathe and Flow, which are two yogis, very similar to what we do. They have a YouTube channel as well. And they were in Nosara, and we met up, and it was funny because they were releasing some, you know, a meditation, a, a meditation. The, a meditation program. Yeah, and we were releasing the 14 Days of Yoga on YouTube. And we got the geekiest New Year's Eve. Like the four of us had our laptops. And we like, I remember we shared like a little piece of cake and tea. And we're like, Happy New Year. <laughs> like, we just worked. We just worked. Like we had a computer party. But it was funny but. to meet a couple like out there. We thought we were the only crazy people. <laughs> they were like, Hey, you guys do the same thing as us. You, Let's you. do the same thing together. Yeah. It was funny too, though, because when just before New Year's hit, we were like, we made this plan to go walk down to the beach. Yeah. And then we're like, okay, we're going to go walk to the beach just for when the, you know, when it strikes 12. <laughs> and of course we were all wrapped up in our work and we're like, oh my God, we have three minutes. <laughs> and we all threw on our shoes and left our computers all whatever we were doing and started walking. And it's like a 10 minute, no, five minute walk to the beach from where we were. Yeah. And so like two minutes into the walk, we're like literally on a dark street. And all we hear is like, happy new And then it's just like, we're just surrounded by like all kinds of people. It was really funny. That was really, yeah. but we did get to the beach two minutes later and that was really cool. Yeah. What a beautiful New Year's that was, though. Yeah. It was nice. <laughs> Geeky, beautiful New Year's. Yeah, check out Breathe and Flow. They're like, well, it's Breathe and Flow. The uh, Their names are Breathe and, and fl- Flow, but the channel is called Breathe and Flow. And they're really, yeah. really um, amazing, beautiful couple. Yeah. And they do great people. yoga. Yeah, they're really. good, amazing yoga teachers, too. So, mm-hmm. shout outs to Breathe and Flow. Shout out. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, so, it's, a lot of people are saying retreat idea could be. Um, up their alley that's really cool could be neat i don't know we got to figure this out eh um but people seem to like it they seem to really resonate with it here if you guys want to ask us some questions there that'd be cool yeah i think we're trying to wrap it up in an hour oh no someone called us out on saying a did i say a like the canadian a you always say a oh my god michelle you got me (laughs) I'm yeah. Hey, hey, what do you think, eh? <laughs> what do you think? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, is that another one? Yeah. Oh, it's on there. There it is. <laughs> okay. Um, so Sylvia Lisa asked, uh, "How do you handle and feel about the different way of living in Costa Rica and British Columbia? Is a big rearranging for you from paradise back to normal life?" Hmm. I think paradise is a state of mind. Yeah, I think Costa Rica was normal life for us too, too, and here. Like it. Well, and Billy DM saying, "Are you back in Canada?" We are right now. Yeah, we came to visit some family and introduce Xavian. Yeah, because no one's actually met Xavian except our moms who came out to Costa Rica to help out. So it was really important and, for us to introduce him to the family. And Canadian yeah. summers are wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Um. So we thought yeah. we'd come back and. It's funny because I think coming back this time, we realized that um, home um, isn't a country or a location or a physical building or anything like that. It's really, um, it's just sort of a, a state inside of feeling at peace where you are. Yeah, it used to be before it was home was where the dog is for us. And we thought that that meant it was a physical place. <laughs> and it was because wherever Prince was, we were like, oh, we go go back to Prince, right? Mm-hmm. Especially when we used to do a lot of the traveling but now that, you know, our princey is looking over us and in our hearts, um, for us, home is, yeah, like Mark said, it didn't really, it doesn't feel like we can't, it's hard for us to even say like, oh, we're home. No, we're not. Our home is also in Costa Rica. You know, we spend so much time there and we have such a beautiful community of friends and we truly do, f- I, to be honest, I feel more at home there than here. If, if you were to talk about that feeling of like, ah, oh, like I'm home. But um, it's still like, it's, I don't know, it's really nice to be back here with our families, definitely, and seeing some friends that we're going to see. Like there's so many benefits but, to everything. But I mean, we spend 
a minimal amount of time in Canada over the last four or five years. Yeah. So Canada, to in it as a country, doesn't feel like home. We may be Canadian, but I don't think it's home. I think home is where we are, and we've traveled yeah. so much, and we've been in motion so constantly that um, it's almost like if we stay too long somewhere, like we have to leave. Like we're getting to this Get weird, like yeah. this weird point of even in Costa Rica, it's like we felt like we needed to go somewhere. Where well, we would go around the country too like we traveled all through the country for like two months shooting tons and tons of content for you guys so that was really fun but also kind of fulfilled that itch to be like oh let's just change our scenery a little bit mm -hmm. you know? so um, which is important and how do we tr how do we handle the transition of a lot of rearranging i think had to happen like because the question asked about was there a lot of rearranging that had to happen and i yeah. think the only rearranging was internally because in Costa Rica, like we said earlier, it was like, it's a place where you can go and just exist in the moment quite easily. And I find in Canada, there's a lot more things that suck you into the energy of this, of the, of the land you're on. So I mm -hmm. find that the news here is just that much, like it's really toxic, toxic and really prevalent. So if you're not mindful of keeping it away from your peripheral and your energy. You get um, sucked right in Yeah, there. you get sucked yeah. in. And then it, it also that, because of that, and it's funny that media would determine social media, which will, will which also helps influence social circles, which influences communities, which in, influences conversations. So it break, it comes from like a very top point and it resonates throughout everything here. And the only, the main rearranging I've had to do is like to really strengthen myself, to, to remember that all the noise doesn't matter. What matters is you and what matters is my family and what matters is the limited time we have on this planet, not all the drama going on about COVID and vaccines and traveling and, and this and that. And, and what matters is that the fires are burning in, in Canada right now and that they're cutting down old growth trees, like things that aren't coming back. Mm -hmm. And everything else seems like to just be more of like a, a like, I don't know, like a, a magnetic pull of, of ego and emotion. So yeah. the rearranging was spiritual. I've had to like strengthen my morning practice. Um, yeah, we've had some moments where we're like, whew, like we feel like we've returned to a different state. Because it's a different reality energy. here. Yeah. yeah, because to be honest, in Costa Rica, like we felt very removed from everything. And even just the idea of, of COVID, I guess, didn't feel as intense there. Like It's not. I mean, the community we lived in, like... Didn't there, exist. There's very little restrictions. There was COVID, just, but people handled it just, in a different way. Yeah, and then here, it's like just it a different energy. It didn't yeah. exist in people's daily... Like, you washed your hands, you did what you did. Like, it was... It was a thing to be mindful of and to always be precautious of, but it wasn't a thing that determined the outcome of every day of your life. Yeah, and it wasn't like thrown in your face everywhere you looked. That's mm -hmm. what I find. And so when we came back here, remember even, we were talking about not about COVID, but even uh, yesterday on our walk, Mark, you, you brought something about U.S. Fauci or some kind of thing you read somewhere. And I remember you telling me this and I was like, I feel like I've just completely removed myself from all of that. I have no idea what's going on in the world and that, you know, the politics and all of that. Like, I don't know. I, I subconsciously removed myself from it. And I think well, just from being in Costa Rica. So it's, it's funny when we come back here, like, well, I don't want to be pulled back in. Yeah, like, exactly. I'm happy to just, whatever is happening, cool. I'll just care about where I am right now. And mm -hmm. that's why we're like, the things that matter to us here, like old growth trees are being cut we'll down. We'll go fight for the trees. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but all of that other noise to us, like, it's just interesting. It's, it's again, like being that self-aware about like, whoa, it's, it's trying to pull you back in. So you have to just find the power. And like, we found a really nice groove of just existing in our, in our own state of mind, our own yeah. bubble. And, but I find no matter where we go, it just takes like grounding yourself where you go yeah. and then rearranging internally so that you can be the best light you can be in that situation exactly yeah and and so here it's different and there it's different too yeah um and home is just, it's really wherever we are wherever yeah. we roll out our mat in a way <laughs> yeah. i don't know wherever xavian is right like, she's always with us <laughs> which is always with us exactly a little yeah. xavian yeah. Um, so there's some, Ann, Ann Anderson's asking if we're going to post more videos on our personal YouTube channel because she misses our vlogs and Laura yeah, yeah. then, um, said, yes, more vlogs, please. And the answer to that is yes. And there's a few questions about my classes and if I'm going to keep doing them and the consistency of what we're going to be releasing over the next little while. Um, and 
we we be, actually we're trying to continue to do um, two videos on YouTube a week and um, one exclusive video on official um, every week, which is a monster yeah. of a commitment. And we have a um, a really talented friend named Adrian who traveled with us for the last few months in Costa Rica. He's been helping um, take some of the weight off because the goal is to return back to the art of making more vlogs yeah. and expressing more of the poetry of life exactly. and our experiences through it. Um, and the first one up that we're going to do next week, hopefully, or start on, will be the birth story video. Yeah. And a lot of people were asking that question in the, the comments. comments. Yeah. Actually, um, I had a home birth, those of you guys that don't know, and we had cameras set up through it. Not that we're going to be showing the whole home birth, oh my but God. Um, there is a lot of beautiful content that we want to share and some of our experiences. And so I think that's that's the first video that um, hopefully will be coming out shortly on our personal YouTube channel where we can share um, the journey, the experience, and then also just share like the first six months of being new parents and oh, yeah. what it's been like, you know. Six months of parenting. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got to say? Exactly. Co-sleep. I mean, that's what I'd say. <laughs> just co-sleeping. It's the secret to, to parenting. I think. <laughs> it's just like I had a friend of mine was telling me she's pregnant, and it was just like co-sleep. She's like, "What?" I'm like, "Sleep with your baby. It's the best thing you can it do." It helped. It helps a lot for us, at least. It's amazing. It's been our secret, I think. Yeah. But we'll talk about that on the second channel yes. in the vlog, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we're going to put a lot more energy into that. And, and thank you guys. Personally, I'm reading these comments about my classes, and it's um, it's been a really beautiful experience to share that side of my life yeah. um, with you guys. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had a wonderful teacher to grow with. <sighs> and, and I don't know. And it, now it's lovely because I really feel like each week we're able to give... Um, a little bit of our individual energies too well like, and, a, and, yeah. a, and a duality to different yeah not just styles and they do complement each other because we obviously have grown together in our practice doing yoga for five years together but i think also just like um different approaches to like one can do a morning class one can do an evening class and that's cool mm -hmm. like we get to release like m more that like of what we have as 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 a partnership exactly to the world which is exciting so that's our plan for the rest of the summer at least um is to continue with this output and hopefully with the help of our team we can stick to that and release tons of videos for you guys like i said we did a lot of shooting on like costa rica oh so <laughs> there's tons of content backlogged and so we just have to keep putting it out there and hopefully you guys are enjoying it. So Yeah. Yeah. It was um it's been a really crazy time. And we yeah, we missed I guess just to say, like we missed that week, two weeks ago when we came to Canada, because coming to Canada was so crazy. And um, that's the thing is you have to be accepting that and mindful, but like, you know what? Like our life was just upside down. We were like having to travel and this was first time Xavier and traveling, which he did great. Um, but you know, with the whole situation in Canada too, it's very, very intense to just return back to the country with like hotel quarantines and this, and like, there was a lot going on. And so mm -hmm. we unfortunately, like we just, we couldn't do it because it, at the end of the day, it's still the two of us kind of having to do the big pushing. And so, but you know, it happens like anything in life. You sometimes do miss deadlines and that's just the course of life. And so we we're like, you know what guys, sorry, forgive, forgive, forgive and like, keep moving we, forward. We missed a week, but we're going to keep pushing forward. And this week you have a new class coming your way. We're very soon so yep <laughs> it's just ebb and flow of life right amazing anyways i think this is good you guys are saying such beautiful things um thank you from all over the world like i've seen so many <laughs> oh my goodness she's peeking i want to read <laughs> just so many places uh people from so many beautiful places um which is so cool and and i think that's what's really the best thing about the internet we talk about a lot about the negative things about the internet but the, but the best things is things like this where you can you can put out good energy and have it find people with good energy and then you can share in it together mm -hmm. like share in our energies and, and express and connect and i see people actually talking about their own lives and their own facebook groups and things like that on here which is um, amazing which i think is that's so cool. what we need is to share right so if you have a good thing going like share with this community because we need more of that right yeah. now in this world, right? As people doing their best 
to contribute one way or another in lifting each other up. That's what mm -hmm. we always talk about. You know, there's enough things out there in the world that is bringing everybody down. So let's do what we can to bring each other up mm -hmm. and the world and the animals and the earth, <laughs> all of those things. Amazing. Well, guys, I think with that, I think we should wrap up. Um, thank you guys again yeah. so much just for being here, part of our community. If you're on YouTube right now and you're not part of the chat, feel free to join us next time on our Boho Beautiful podcast by joining our community, Boho Beautiful Official. Um, and we're just very yeah. grateful. I think that we always end everything we do with just so much gratitude because it fills us up. And you guys do give us the inspiration there was a to last do what we question, do. Actually. Basically said, where do you find the inspiration for what you do? Yeah, and a and big I was, reason is you guys. Yeah, is no, and community. that is, and, is. I, and the gratitude we have for being able to set up this room full of equipment on a Saturday morning and just put our energy into sharing it and sh receiving your energy yeah. back in return. Yeah, so thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you for for spending this time with us on your Saturday wherever you are in the world. And thank uh, you for enjoying our classes and yes. being here with part of Bo Beautiful Official. Um, mm. Or if you're on YouTube or just being part of our YouTube community. Thank you. Mm. Um, it's just, I don't know. It's Life's a crazy journey and you know we, this is such a blessing. Yeah. It's truly, we don't take a second of it for granted. Yeah, so thank you guys. Sending you all of our love, all of our light. We hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and... Uh, we will see you next time. Amazing, guys. <laughs> Love and light. Ciao.